and welcome to the Create You Experience. Now, what the heck is the Create You Experience? Well, first of all, it's one of my favorite days of the week on Tuesday, every Tuesday here on YouTube, because not only do we jump into the actual podcast with four different camera angles, that's right, this is a podcast as well, so you can stream it all across audio platforms, including Spotify and iTunes, but we jump into an actual experience as well, and this is really exciting, because you can gain some strategy structures, or even gain some inspiration or motivation, or just entertainment, for your day to bring your vision to the next level. Now today, we have my man Chase joining us and you'll learn a little bit more about him on the podcast, but he was on The Bachelorette and he came in third. Very, very interesting story. But what's even more interesting is what he's created after the show and as he's been a new found, I would say, social media star. Now he owns Revel Social, which is a, a great company. It's a bar and grill, you can check it out in Denver, Colorado, but they also do some nightlife. So we're gonna just pump up this episode with some action-packed motivation, showing you what's going on in his nightlife, but also with his restaurant. And yeah, without further ado, if you haven't checked out Revel Social in Denver, Colorado, go check it out, amazing food. But let's jump right in. Old walls that I built for you Just to dig me out with silver spoons No, I didn't see it coming, oh Old walls that I'm stuck inside I guess beauty sees what I can't find I didn't, no, I didn't see it coming well, I got your code and I got your message I want you to know that you are the love of my life The love of my life You never leave when the song is over You ride or die till the end You're the love of my life You're the love of my life My life Oh Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right, cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life. I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight, I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right. I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two, can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you. Welcome to the Create You Experience. Remember, if you are new here, we're here on YouTube, but also audio platforms, so Spotify, iTunes, we got it all. But here on YouTube, before the actual podcast itself, we have an experience. And with this experience, we really want to challenge you to get uncomfortable and tune in for the entire video to maybe learn something new or just grab an experience and incorporate some structures or strategies that we talk about or just gain some entertainment. And so if you are new here, remember, actually you can't remember because it's your first fucking time here. By the way, it's unfiltered. I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but when you review the podcast here in the show notes or in the description um, on iTunes only, you get seven free products. So definitely go ahead and do that five stars. If you could do six stars, that'd be fucking awesome. But uh, iTunes doesn't allow you to. Today, we have someone very unique. Someone that's been on reality TV, he owns a restaurant and bar that also does some nightlife scene. And with the experience, we actually tapped into that nightlife. It's an incredible bar. It's called Revel Social. And the man right here sitting in front of me, I'm so, I, I, can you put your arm I'm out, bro? I'm I can't here. believe you're real, you bro. Can, yep. He's can. from The Bachelor. He is. He's from all these TV shows. My man, Chase, say what's hey, up. Hey, what's up? Hey, create you. Here to kind of share a little bit about where I've been and what we're uh, what we're working on. Yeah, bro. So so guys, check this out. This man Chase, 
almost won a reality TV show. And to be honest, like I don't even understand reality TV. I don't even know if there's any much of reality in the TV itself, but uh, I'm very interested in that. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. And I'm also interested in his story and and how he's come to where he is today. And, uh, you know, he has a big following, but also he owns, you know, a restaurant and bar. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how Um, it all came to be. You know, it's, it's one of those that I was just a uh, kind of a regular guy. You know, I, I graduated from Colorado State University, was working for, you know, Milwaukee Tool at one point in time. Um, Milwaukee what? Milwaukee Tool, Power Tools, selling power tools for three years. Really? Yeah. Is that why women love you so much? I don't know. Do women love guys that sell power tools? <laughs> I, I, I think so, <laughs> I man. I, think so. I mean, you know, I moved from that into uh, medical device sales and I was in the OR three to four days a week. Just uh, watching old ladies get hacked up and helping them wow. fix their back. Um, Hacking up old ladies. That's uh yeah, it was, that's, it was a grind. I mean, a lot of people know <laughs> what the industry of, of medical device sales is, but a lot of people don't understand the actual grind that goes into that. So that's what I was doing. I was doing that, that for three years. And then, uh, you know, one thing after another wound up at the casting call for the bachelor kind of, as Bro, how, did, wait, t- how did that happen? How did that happen? Tell me. So the, the story goes, I was, I was in Colorado Springs for work. Um, I was cruising back and one of my buddies called me and was like, yo, bachelor casting calls in Denver tonight. I think you should go. (laughs) And no joke. My response immediately was like, fuck you. Why would I do that? (laughs) And he was like, I don't know, man. I just think you're like perfect for it. I'm like, yeah, sure. Whatever. 10 minutes later, unsolicited, another friend calls me and tells me the exact same thing. And I'm like, all right, apparently this is an event tonight in Denver that I should think about. <laughs> and then a third buddy is like, yo, I'm getting some beers and we're going to the bachelor casting call. It's at Earl's off 16th Street Mall. Join me. I'm like, all right, fine. A few beers later, a couple shots in, I ended up flirting with the senior casting producer. Um, and she told me to stay single till September when they actually cast the bachelorette because it was the bachelor casting call and there was 200 women. And we were, I was one of like 12 dudes that showed up. Oh, so you were bachelorette. Call. Yeah, you were bachelorette. on the bachelorette. Okay, my bad. I called you a bachelor. I didn't mean That's to upgrade fine. you so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll do that later. You gotta earn that. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I, I uh, kind of skated through the whole casting process, which wasn't fast and it wasn't easy. You know, they test you for STDs. They test your psychology. They test you for drugs. Um, they fly you out and put you in front of a camera to see if you can, can really? withstand interview process. It's a whole shebang. And... Uh, then I made it on the show, and that was definitely a life-changing event for me. Was it real? Was it real? That's, Come on, you know, tell that's, me. That's tell the me, question I get most. Tell um, me, dude. Tell me. So I, had, I do have a scripted answer for that that's pretty standardized, and I say, yeah, it's... But hold on. I know. We'll, we'll give you both. Oh, okay. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> the Jeez. scripted answer is, yeah, it's, it's real, but it's also influenced from production. So production will kind of sit in your ear and chirp and say, hey, I think you should do this. But at the end of the day, it's completely up to you whether you do that or not. You can do, say, and act however you want to on the reality. Like my friend Alex, for instance. Yeah. They turned him out to be like a crazy person at one point. And then like he was like a good guy and then he was a fucking crazy person. (laughs) So, you know, he probably listened to production a little bit and and did as they said is, you know, go and talk to JoJo and talk some shit about Chad because someone has to fill that role in every season. Did Alex talk shit about you? Not about me. I'm Chase, not Chad. Come on. Oh, oh, shit, Chad. Yeah. Do you know Chad? Yeah, I know Chad. Is he cool? No. He's not cool? No. There's nothing about Chad that's Is cool. he really not actually a cool person? No. He's 100% a douche. <laughs> I want to be friends with him. Can, I, can you invite him Do me a favor. Podcast? Go to ChaseMcNary.com. <laughs> uh, what is this? Go to, do, do me a favor. Go to ChaseMcNary.com. Okay. So, so, sorry that there's fucking slime on there. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. ChaseMcNary.com. So you might have to, you know, take that, that space out. Uh, and I actually, got you. Yeah. All right, we're currently, guys. It, so, it, you, know, you know, when you're filming The Bachelorette. There's literally a fucking, why do you have a hair, like a hairy chested. That says Chad stuff. <laughs> Lots of us. <laughs> so this fucking guy, while I'm still filming The Bachelorette without a phone, without access to the internet or anything, he gets voted off, goes home and oh, purchases shit. my name as no a URL. Shit. Oh, fuck. No way. Yeah. This is not real life. Not only that, this guy has never seen a squat rack in his life. Look oh at all those. my! Yeah. Did he really do this? Yeah. How is he doing? Is he is he doing well? I don't care. What's his name? Chad. Oh. Chad. Chad. What? Uh. Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Ocho Cinco. Bachelor. <laughs> okay. If if anyone is like listening right now, Chad was like this 
was a d bag like he always like give gave these evil eyes to the to the camera bro i watched it yeah i just don't remember you cool just being honest. No, for sure. I, mean, I, I don't remember I the people that I'm going to be really good friends with one day. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just mind fucked you. <laughs> but this is, this is Chad. Everyone that's watching right now, this is the Chad guy. You could see how he could be a little aggressive. He was on roids, right? Oh, for Would he, sure. Was he shooting up there? Uh, oh, I, I you don't, shouldn't say that, yeah. I don't know if he was or wasn't. Six-inch um, like, needle? or Yeah, I didn't see any needles. <laughs> But he definitely was like either post cycle or going through something strong. He even told me he got a custom suit made, and then two weeks later he was too big for it. Wow! So he's really working so out hard. I think you know during our yeah during our season he definitely was going through a, a plethora of emotions based on his hormones because we know what steroids can okay. do to that. So, anyways, you made it really far in the season. Yep. And and was it real? Like, did you have feelings for? Her? Um, you know, I I did. I do. I still think JoJo is an amazing person. I think she did a fantastic job with the role. However, I do know that early on, and I was confirmed to this. Wait, I don't, wait, wait. I don't think you should say this, though. I can say whatever you want. Are you sure? It's unfiltered. Yeah, but what if you don't get on certain shows and stuff ever again? Uh, no, I'm not worried about it. You sure? Yeah. I knew early on JoJo yeah. and Jordan were going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> early on, JoJo and Jordan were, were going to go the distance together. So then it kind of became, you know, it was never like for sure. It was like, well, maybe she is still into me more than Jordan. But it was pretty easy to tell that Jordan was her guy. So then it kind of just became go as far as you could possibly go. And that's, mm. you know, so then I made it hometowns. Everyone thought for sure that Luke was going to beat me and he went home four. So then I, I actually made it to um, so you met her. So you met her family. I did not. Only top two men are family. Oh shit, man! Yeah. You were like that close. Yeah, I was. Real you were close. like, so I'm like third. It's, it's almost like you're you're her dad, and you're like this. Uh, 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 yeah, no, you're off the show. <laughs> <laughs> it was more than that, though. It was, I mean, I got invited into the fantasy suite, which is the first night you get to stay with the girl off camera and actually have some like candid one-on-one -on -one time doing whatever you want to do in the fantasy suite. Dude, dude, did did you guys watch like any cool shows in there? I didn't. So she invited me to finish the suite. Production was convincing enough to tell me, hey, you haven't said I love you yet to JoJo. We think you should probably do this. Oh. So I get the I was like, all right, if she gives me the fantasy suite, I'll do that. I got in the fantasy suite. I did that. <laughs> she used that as the excuse to dump me. She said, as soon as you said I love you, I just didn't feel it. And I was like, what the fuck you did you talk to did, did you talk to her after? Like be like, yo, I didn't love you. Like, let's just get this real. No. I never said that because I do, <laughs> you know, I have an immense amount of love for JoJo, but be, be, falling in love with someone, I think, takes a lot of time and effort. Yeah. And the show, it, I mean, it, it can foster that, but I also am pretty realistic in the sense that two, it's going to take more than two months for me to right. full out fall in love. Yeah, so, okay, so, so after that happened, now I understand a little bit yeah. more. Like, I've heard that you're, like, locked in fucking hotel rooms for, like, days and oh, days. Yeah. Like, it's, it's pretty brutal. So I got the best into the stick, actually. So I got dumped the third day I was in Thailand. And then... Wait, was the helicopter coming? Did, did you get picked up by a helicopter by any chance? No. Oh, no, that wasn't you. No, that wasn't me. I wish. But no, they actually kept me in Thailand for 10 more days to keep spoilers from leaking. So I, I was able to stay in Thailand for 10 days, all expenses paid. I in a jail cell? I rode elephants, played, rode jet skis. I did everything I ever wanted to do for 10 days. And it was really? pretty easy to get over a breakup in that way. Interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, so she also had 30 other boyfriends. 25. 25. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> how is that when you go into the room the first day and like you saw 24 other dudes? Yeah. That's um, chasing after one guy, like one girl. Like, what do you do? That actually is a very good point. Like walking into that mansion for the first time, you walk out of your, your apartment and you meet three other guys that get in the limo with you. And, and right off the bat, I looked at the three guys in the limo and I was like, Chase, uh, be careful. This is my competition. Be, I was yeah, like, I'm but, feeling but pretty Chase, good. But Chase, it's personality, man. It is personality. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> two of the guys in my limo. I'm not cutting actually, that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking That's fine. Me. You don't need to. We've come a long way since. Then. <laughs> um, but you know, walking into the house, you you see your competition, and and it's guys from all over the nation, really good looking studs, and and also guys that are like not so good looking. You're like, who's going to be the crazy? Some people one have here? good businesses. Some people have, aren't doing anything. Yeah, like yeah. It's all, yeah. 
I mean, it, it takes a minute to really get everybody figured out because 25 guys in one room and everybody's been drinking and we're all going after one girl. So, you know, it's not until about the second week that you actually start to kind of figure out who's who and what they're actually about and who's going to be your real competition in the house. Interesting. So, damn, dude, I want to freaking go on this show, man. I might know somebody. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually do. I think I would be a very good person. They're wrapping up filming for the current season right now, so you'll have to wait an extra Damn, year. Damn, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'm in love by then. You're doing bigger, better things. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. You don't need the show. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. I definitely would like to go, though. Right. I'll just, <laughs> look, we can just, let's just, we'll have a, a spin off Bachelor. Oh, do you want to have one here? Revel. Yeah. Oh, Revel. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about, let's, all right. So, you went on the show, you do all this fun stuff. Yeah. Then you graduated from the show. I would like to say graduation. You were handed a diploma. I like that, I like that for it. Yeah, you yeah. were handed a diploma. You yeah. were like, Chase, thank you so much for losing. Right. This is your, <laughs> this is your fucking, <laughs> this is your debt. Right. You sacrificed <laughs> two months of your life. All your personal. Good luck. Laundry is aired for yeah, everybody yeah. to know. <laughs> and then, uh, so you have a very large following. You gained yeah. a large following from that. So what occurred after that? Like what was yeah. your setting? So post show, I came back and I actually went back to work. Um, I went back to medical device sales for, for three months and a series of unfortunate events happened. The president of my company had actually passed away while I was filming and new oh, wow. guy stepped in. Um, I just wasn't fond of that guy. I was making more money with opportunities and traveling and endorsements and all that stuff. So I took the leap of faith and, uh, kind of actually followed a girl and just some bad advice and moved out to LA. And, and you have this, this thought of LA. I do. I've got. My thought, and now because I've lived, did there, opinion, like guys, guys and girls, well, mostly women are opinion. watching this now. Um, Take it as you please. If you live in LA and you love LA, good for you. I love LA, and I even I heard this. Go ahead. What do I'm, you think of LA? I'm not a fan of LA. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe it's a great place to visit, but if it fell off from the country, I wouldn't be upset. Wow. <laughs> I hope it becomes a country, and then we go to war with it, and it defeats us. Why? Why? Whatever. The I don't know why the fuck I just said that. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it sounded delicious. It yeah. sounded great. It sounded juicy. But okay, so Revel. So you, so, so we're a long way out from Revel. So that oh happened. Gosh, I moved dude. to LA, started. Dude, my know, legs are sore. I've been doing fucking bodybuilding workouts. Like I can't be. Come on. Get this guy some creatine. <laughs> HCL or H monohydrate? I'm, I don't know anything about HCL. I just found out about HCL today oh, or yeah? yesterday, right? I walked into GNC. I'm like, yo, man, yo, my brother, I want some monohydrate. You're like, I'm bodybuilding now. What do you got? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, He's like, yeah, man, you, uh, monohydrate, yeah, you have the micronized, but also HCL. HCL is, is incredible. I'm like, what the fuck is HCL? What is HCL? Is this a new for? drug? Hydro, uh, hydrochloride? Uh, <laughs> you better hi hydrogen chloride? <laughs> I don't fucking know, okay. to be honest. But like, he's Me like, either. yo, this is like this, this is the stuff for the last year. It's been researched. It's way better than just creatine monohydrate. Yeah. Um, it absorbs better. Anyways, I did it. Dude, literally 15 minutes later, I looked like I was on steroids. You're jacked. <laughs> <laughs> immediately gained 20 I'll be right pounds. back. I'm going to go to GNC. <laughs> <But> anyways. <laughs> so back to me. This is my podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. It's fucked up, man. Just kidding. I'm creating you. Right. So show some respect. Um, yeah. You know, I, I knew after the show that I wanted to kind of take the path less traveled. I didn't want to follow the route that everyone had gone. And I wanted to start creating my own business in some way, shape, or form. So I did a couple things, you know, I, I built a company called Leisure Leisureletics with my buddy Sean, um, and I started my own kind of fitness platform. And both of those were in, in lieu of to try and build a product that I knew my new massive following would, would appreciate and also bite into. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot along the way. And then I also signed with a management company that was very, um, I would say, convincing. And they You get convinced pretty well, huh? Is it pretty easy to convince you? I'm a trusting guy. Interesting. Until you break trust. With and then me. you really hate it. So like California broke your trust. You're like, fuck California. Right. All the sand. That right. sand's I not even like, that oh, white. It's the land of opportunity. I trust this Yeah, town. like your beaches suck. Yeah. Do you really think that the beaches suck in Cali? I never said the beaches suck in Cali. Wow, man. I can't believe you would say that. <laughs> I only said the beaches. See, that's manipulation right there. And, and I'm going to reverse. He never said <laughs> yeah. that. He never said that. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I'm catching on to you. I'm understanding <laughs> how you operate here. Yeah, but you said about California. <laughs> so, so now I need to watch my words. <laughs> so you built the so you built your um uh that clothing business yeah, first, athletic then the Caroline. management system uh, or management, yeah, and then what happened? And then dropped into a management company that was was um you know I 
now in hindsight, I realized that they were kind of in bed almost with MTV. So I had another opportunity to go on ABC for Bachelor Winter Games, but I was convinced that MTV was going to be a better direction. So I actually ended up on what I think is the worst show on TV, X on the Beach. Interesting. X on the Beach? X on the Beach. So, dude, I would not even want to be in that scenario. Like, no. I'm the X on the Beach. It was terrible. Were you ex- in California? <laughs> was it on the beach? In I was in Hawaii. <laughs> And they, yeah. it didn't put Hawaii in a very soft spot of my heart either. Really? So like Just they really was, f- you up? Yeah. Oh yeah. I got off that show and I was in a deep, dark, dark place. Um, it was just a bad show. It's, it's literally, it was a month of filming of hell. Like it was, it was, I was locked in a house with other reality TV stars that, you know, went over and beyond to be extra, to be on reality TV. And they were nothing like that. I, I'm guessing they were. Yeah. Nothing like that. That's, that's wild. Are you allowed to say that? Do, or do I have to cut that out too? Uh, you don't have to cut that out. Cool. All right. Just say it next time whenever you're ready. Say what? Like cut that out. Cut that shit. Like out. the beach. Cut yeah. that out, Brendan. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Until I fuck that trust up. I fuck that and trust then I'm up. no longer a part of the mainland of the United States of right. America. Um, uh, but no, it was just you know it was a really hard place for me to to thrive, and it was the wrong direction. It was a terrible decision, but I learned from it a lot. I came off that show, and I fell into depression. Hated L.A. Hated that. I got talked in that show and I moved to Scottsdale, Arizona um, and kind of hid out from the world for about 10 months. And how was that in Arizona? Um, it was, you know, it was Arizona. My family had a vacation home there. So I moved into that for a few months. Then I got my own apartment and I was just in a lost, lost space of like, what am I doing with my life? What has reality TV done to me? Who am I now? And I was really, really confused on what direction I was going to go. Mm. Um, and that's when the idea of Revel Social came about. And what was that idea? The idea was that my business partner now, Sean and I had, you know, post-show, we'd also done a lot of traveling. We'd been to a ton of venues. We've seen a lot of things that worked, a lot of things that didn't work. Um, we tried the Leisureletics thing. It just seemed to fizzle out and it was an oversaturated market. So we wanted to do something bigger, something more sustainable, something that was going to kind of really challenge us and also succeed. And that was start a bar, restaurant in Denver, Colorado. And now it's evolved into and, like, I, I, dude, I, I honestly, when I first walked in, I was like, the first time I walked in there, um, I wasn't quite sure. Then the second time that I walked in, like there were so many people there yeah. and I was like, yo, I like this because it's not like, it's not like rage. Yeah. You're not raging, right. but it's also not fucking like crickets everywhere. Yeah. You know? So it has like this really good loungy vibe where yeah. it's kind of just. For, for, I mean, obviously that you've seen a little bit of footage beforehand, but you know, it's kind of that edgy botanical look. And then, and then we want a, a fun place for younger adults to come. You know, we don't want it to be like a college fraternity place where everyone's just sloppy throwing up, even though that has happened sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But you know, we wanted a place where it's, you know, mature people with a little bit of money to spend and, and they want to come and have fun and meet somebody new maybe. Um, and there's and, a lot of, be- I, I'm going to say this, there's a lot of beautiful women in there. Yeah. We've done really well in kind of catering to our demographic, and, and that is we want mostly women in our barn restaurant because I think that brings the right crowd. Yeah, well, yeah, for all of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're like so kind about it. <laughs> women, come into Revel Social today. Find and your you, find your future wife yeah. at Revel Social. Yeah, but no. In all seriousness, though, um, I you know, by the time this is airing, I could be a, a DJ there at Revel. Yeah. Um, you know, bringing some good vibes and, you know, a lot of it. And, and here's the thing is, um, music's also a very important part of, of the culture of, of what's going on, even if it's like in the background very slightly. Right. So yeah. like, what is the, what is the feel of music with all like the club, like not the club, it's not a club, but like the yeah. restaurant and the bar itself and all of that. What, what is the vibe of that? What um, you know, we, we do give a little bit of freedom to whatever DJ is playing. We, however, we do put them kind of in the lanes in the direction of, you know, we want to keep it top 40s we want to keep it things that are people um that people enjoy people hear. enjoy that you know get the bodies moving um but also don't attract the wrong crowd per se right 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 and and also you so show your food right so you had a mm-hmm. chef in there like some things happen let me tell the, you the, the biggest lesson that i've learned since opening revel social is the effects a bad hire can do for any business right um we we did hire a bad chef right off the bat and on purpose like no. you knew that he wasn't very good no it wasn't on purpose right so so this then this is what i would say is because i like i have my businesses and yeah. i i never think it's a bad hire i think it's just a 
uh, it just doesn't fit like what I want or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And yeah. so like that's that's important to say because you know, Well, that, I'm gonna tell you why it's a bad hire. Okay. This guy. Because he's now in mechanical school to be a mechanic. Oh, car. interesting. So yeah. so did he put gasoline in the fucking <laughs> He might have. In the acai bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was enough to where it, it affected, you know, reviews. It affected just people word of mouth. People come in. They're they're super excited to come try Rebel Social, but the food was terrible, so they're never coming back. Well, do you have a bison burger? No. Okay. You want me to talk to my chef and get a bison burger? Dude, right this you? is what I'm gonna say, man. <laughs> you want to fucking make big waves everywhere, dude? Wild game meats. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, if you have, it's expensive though. It is. But like, and that's that's, that's you know, right now we're still. With this new chef, he's he's been there for just over a month now. We're still working to really find the identity of of Revel Social as far as right, the restaurant right, right. side goes. Because um, of our location, if you don't know, we're located just across the street from from Coors Field, Twenty Second and Blake. Yeah, go, please, like seriously, go. And every Saturday night, because I might be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're, freaky, freaky. we might have a new DJ. Which <laughs> have you figured out your DJ name yet? Because that was my biggest question for you. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um. So we were thinking about a couple names. Actually, me and my buddies. Um, DJ, we can go either go DJ B Myers, okay. DJ Create, or DJ CU. So CU is C E E U, okay. CU. So then it's obviously Create U. So, yeah. um, I'm very much impartial. Option B. You like B? Yeah. DJ Create. Yeah. You don't like DJ B Myers? Standard, boring. You'll get lost in the dust. Do you think that? Do you think that, Mike? You don't know? You think so? Yes or no? I mean, I know Fucking it's your name. Shadow. I don't want to offend your name, but you know. You don't like my name? DJ. It's a DJ name. Chase, if we were if we were locked in yeah. a hotel together on The Bachelorette, yeah. would you try and kill me? Absolutely not. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> Rebel. Okay, Rebel Social. Check it Check it out. But okay, I'll, I'll come up with a DJ name. I like DJ Create. Would it just be spelled the same way? Fuck, dude. Standard now word. you're really starting to fuck with me, man. Because like. DJ name's important. I know. It's just like the name of any sort of product. You know, it's got to be something that's. Ooh, what if I was like your DJ? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking DJ. Just your DJ. DJ. Who's coming? Your DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Who's spinning tonight? Your DJ. Your DJ. <laughs> Bro, come on. I next don't level. have a DJ. No, next level. DJ. <laughs> next level. So, okay. So, so with Revel, where do you want to take it? So Revel right now, it's, it's kind of our, our foundation. Um, it's something that, you know, Sean and I have been able to, to prove that we are able to build a restaurant bar business and, mm. it, and it is succeeding. So with that, we, we do have a hospitality group that has started um, and it is, it's called McCarthy Hospitality Group or MHG. Um, and with that, we've got other locations and concepts on the vision board and, and they're okay. approaching rapidly. Interesting. And so like, what, what's, what's that concept? Like, what does it look like? So it's, you know, any sort of hospitality group has multiple concepts and venues and locations and even businesses. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at all things hospitality to maybe someday opening up a hotel. But the first things first is, is looking at another location in Denver to do an absolutely club like a club just a straight up club oh you want to do just a straight up club just a straight up club dude why don't you just fucking tell me man i'm a i'm a dj i'm your dj i mean i was but <laughs> i didn't know what your dj name was you're so a dj <laughs> your dj i still need to buy a spin table yeah this is perfect for you <laughs> this get but that that's serato so you really want to bring up the culture in denver to a whole nother level you yeah. really want it to bring like an uh, a, a scene where it's a lot Brings, I think what, you, what you're getting at is like more happiness around the city, that yeah. like more free. Well, if you compare Denver's nightlife or even, you know, just entertainment district compared to LA or Scottsdale or, or Nashville or Miami. Not even close to Miami. Yeah, it just, it falls short in a lot of areas. And that's yeah. something that Sean and I saw. And we, we think, we know that we can kind of build this, this town up to something that can compete with those big name outgoing cities. Um, and it, it takes a, a while to build that, but Revel Social is the start. Hell yeah. And I'm, I'm fucking going to support that all day. Yeah. I love dancing. I, lo yeah. I, 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 think, I think when you're able to express yourself through dance and going out somewhere and eating some good foods. Let me ask socials, you this. Yep. Do you know the definition of Revel? I always think Rebel whenever I hear Revel, yeah. just, just to be honest. Yeah. Okay. I'll use it in a sentence. Okay. Revolution. No. 
Mm. Yeah, then I, I don't want to. Uh, I wonder if that is the root word, but no. <laughs> revel, <laughs> revel in the chaos. Mm, revel in the chaos. Accept who you are and revel in it. Mm. Interesting. I have brought you to the revel. Now dance if you can. Mm, dance if you can. I think William everybody Wallace, can dance. William that. Wallace said that one. And, and So here's the definition of revel. All right, ready. Enjoying oneself in a lively and noisy way, Got it. especially while dancing and drinking. Okay. That was Urban Dictionary right there. No. That is Webster's Dictionary. Is it really? Yeah. Google it. Oh, my gosh. I can Google. <laughs> I'm going to start using Yahoo just so people can't tell me to Google Yahoo it. that. All right. What is it? Definition of revel. <laughs> Enjoying oneself in a lively and Definition noisy manner. Definition of revel. We'll see, brother. We'll see. Hulk Hogan. All right. Celebrate noisily, often indulging in drinking, engage in uproarious festivities. That's learn to pronounce.com, not Webster's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Webster. All right, all, right, all, right, all right. Webster. We'll see what Revel is because if I'm a. Just click, click all, not. No, all right, brother. There you go. Thank you, brother. Yep. To take intense pleasure or satisfaction revealed in the quiet after everyone had gone. Shouldn't it be has? Maybe they're better at. at they're probably better than me. In, uh, in Why is English? it not? No, there is <laughs> the, pronunci- the definition that I know comes up every time I Google it. <laughs> a, a usually wild party. Are you on Yahoo or Google? Are you sure? Oh, no, I'm still on Google. This oh. is Miriam. Mar- you know Miriam? Miriam. Th- Miriam dated Webster. Webster. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. And th- he was such a dick. <laughs> he was such a dictionary. <laughs> I, I used to do that all the time with my best friends. Yeah. But um, so, so, what type of alcohol do you serve at these places? Um, so, you know, the, our, our direction with Revel is, is an immersive Instagramable experience. So everything that we do there, we kind of try and, and push towards something that someone want to pull out their phone and take a picture of. Um, you know, we like also kind of have fun names with that. So one of our first cocktails that we ever came out with was called What the Duck. Mm. And it was like a blue rump cow drink and it came with an actual little rubber duck. A rubber duck. Like a little tiny rubber duck. Um, it fucking and came was, with a, the was, rubber duck was in the middle of the drink. Yeah, it's was it like, clean? Like a, was it a clean? Like they washed. It. Well, that was that was a fun conversation to have with the health inspector when he came in and discovered that. But he but sat the there for duck. he sat there for a good two hours and contacted his boss um, and did research in all sh- ways, shapes, or forms about where we got the duck, what it was made of, and if it was okay for us to even put in a drink. So what's the, where did you get it? Um, it was we ordered it from one duck. of the, like a restaurant company. So it it's it was all. It all passed, and we're still allowed to serve the the, what, the, the rubber duck. duck. The rubber the, duck. Wow. Okay. So you you have partnerships with alcohol uh, uh, event. What I don't know. I don't know shit about restaurants. Yeah. So I mean, how does it work? As far as the, the liquor, with yeah, like liquor. Do you have a, you have a liquor license? Obviously. Yeah. So li- getting a liquor license is a hell of a process. Learn that. Um, but then also building relationships with any sort of vendors um, and distributors for liquor, and then also each liquor company is massively important to a successful business as far as bar and restaurants go. Really, why? Because they can come in and kind of help you build events, give you better pricing, um, and then also sponsor your events and bring in bigger things that we wouldn't be able to do with our capital. And are you working with anyone now that you want to, that, that you can talk about or? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, like, you know, we for every single event, we're able to kind of reach out to each one and, and we try and pay love to most of them because it benefits them as well. You know, St. Patty's Day, we worked with Jameson. Um, for you know, I do bachelor watch parties at Revel Social every Monday, and we worked with. Do you watch them? Wait, do you? When does it start? Uh, the new one actually airs next Monday, and we've got the the Ferguson twins coming in to host the night. Who are so, they? Uh, Haley and Emily are t- the two twins that were on Ben Higgins' season of The Bachelor. So last season for Colton season, I brought in just about every Monday. I would bring someone in to kind of host the night with me per se, or or just to kind of help. And a lot of people come in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are we? View House used to have the best bachelor watch party in Denver, and we blew them out of the water. That's time. awesome. Why don't Why don't they do like? Do they ever come out here, The Bachelor, or yeah. Bachelorette, to film? Yeah, yeah. In the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, they won't tell you though. I mean, that's all. It's all under wraps. Dude, you can't fucking say this stuff, man. I can, why not? I don't know. Why can't I? I don't say know. That? I feel like you can't. I can say that. It's oh, it's cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't. I don't know when they're coming. I don't know when they came. I just know that. Even like Colton's from here. Colton was the last bachelor. They filmed here a ton. Really? Yeah. Colton. Colton. Colton Underwood. Dude, I didn't watch it last last season. Was it good? Um, I don't know. I didn't either. I was too busy running around Rebel Social making oh, sure really? everyone was. But who did happy. he ended up marrying? Uh he's engaged to Cassie. Are these 
are these guys really like in love with women? I don't know. Colton, you tuning in? You guys in love? <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so interesting. Like you see some real relationships from it for sure. Yeah. Like, and how do you know if something's so like so real? Is do they get married or? Um, you know, there's a handful of people that have gotten married. I think the vast majority of people from the show have not succeeded. Really? Um, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that the, the so show So some has of the to, women are single? Yeah. Interesting. Um, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that the show has to battle every single season is how real is this? How can you fall in love with someone after two months? I could fall in love with them. Yeah. All the women. Yeah. 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 So this is what I'm going to say. Ladies, this is Brennan speaking. If you are watching right now, you call me and you can get me on the, is it The Bachelorette or Bachelorette? Bachelorette. You'd want to, yeah, you'd be on The Bachelorette first. Okay. I will come on The Bachelorette and I will steal your heart and I'll teach you bodyweight training and I'll even get you from bodyweight training to bodybuilding and I'll help you take some creatine HCL. Okay, so. That's your pitch to fall in love? To get on the show? Fucking creatine HCL. <laughs> okay. Like this shit will blow you up in the next. We're going to work on that. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so with all of this being said, you know, we're like your parents obviously have involvement in your life, or I, I don't know. Do you have a relationship with your mom or with your dad? Like, how does that go? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I was I was even labeled on the show as mom's boy. Super close to my mom. Do you feel like you're a mom's boy? Yeah, I've got lots of love for my mom. She and I are real close. Talk to her every other day. Mm. Just well, got every her forty eight uh, hours. Yeah, mm. something like that. So just, how can we make that better? How can we make it 24 hours? No, you don't want to. <laughs> that, I don't want. That's too much. Yeah. But and then what about your father? Uh, you know, my dad is a fantastic man. Um, and I mean, that's. <laughs> is that, Am I touching on a, on a, on a, on a little a bit? That's, that's a, it's, it's only because the show had a huge impact on the relationship with my dad. Really? Yeah. So the. And I've never talked about this, so I don't. I still don't even know if I want this to be aired. Do you, uh, if uh, you can, if you or you can't, like the only reason people. I don't want it to be aired is because I don't want him to catch wind. Mm. Okay, no, I, I don't want to ruin. I don't want to ruin relationships, but I, but I, I like, I like getting vulnerable on these shows. But like, yeah. if, if you're, if you don't want to talk about, it, we don't have to. No, it, mm. Mm. yeah, it's a tough one, man. Yeah, I tough one, brother. Uncomfortable. He found the uncomfortable spot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, I always like to tap in every show. Trust me, I've already had four people that cried on, yeah. the, on the show. It's great. I, it's not great that they're crying. It's great that they're getting it out. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, in all honesty, like, for, <laughs> for me, I, he's choking. <laughs> he's going down. Fuck. He's like, on. there's no assistance here. <laughs> yeah, no water? <laughs> no, listen, man. <clears throat> listen. Just kidding. Yeah, you don't need water. <laughs> what you need. I might actually need some water. <laughs> I can get him, get, I'll get tell him, you. Get, get him a glass of water. <laughs> I'll fill you in on what happens. Okay. You sure? <clears throat> yeah. Be positive. Yeah. It's, I mean, because it is kind of <coughs> a heavy, sad story. Are you dying, man? I don't know what happened. <laughs> you hit the string <laughs> and the throat dried up right here. <coughs> and now it's like I need just some liquidation. In there. Okay. Yeah. No problem, man. We're, we're bringing you the liquor. I'll take a shot. Yo, get the <coughs> goodbye. <good vibe. laughs> you want to take a shot, man? No. By the way, there's creatine in that. Yes. We put creatine in that. <laughs> okay. Now, guys. Okay. Okay, this is some serious shit that he's about to talk about. But here's the thing, man. Do it. No, you know what? Fuck it. Go. No, so <clears throat> my dad is his was a wildly successful man. Still is. Um, you know, growing up, my parents got divorced when I was eight. Things got um, you know, a little little hectic through the divorce for everybody. And then I had my ups and downs, got close to my dad, then we get far apart from my dad. Loved my stepmom and hated my stepmom. All those things happened. Leading up to me leaving for the show, there was just a, a huge gap between my dad and I. Like, he, he, he and I just didn't really have much of a relationship. So, you know, I told him I was leaving for the show, and he was like, oh, cool. But two weeks, I told him two weeks before I left, and then those two weeks in, didn't even hear from him. We didn't even mm. talk. So then I left for the show. And then I'm asked, who do I want to bring on this hometown date? And I didn't want to bring my my, I wanted my dad to be there, but I didn't want to bring my stepmom and her children, yeah. you know? And that's actually what got me in trouble is how I just phrased that. Um, so I brought my dad on the show. Oh, you, so you. But, just my dad. But, but hold on, bro. Hold on. Because like, I know you're saying like, like that's what got me in trouble or whatever, but it's the fact of like, you're just so, super close to your mom. Yeah. Super close to my mom. 
you know, I, I told the story as, as I knew the story up until that point on the show of how my parents got divorced. Mm. And that's the story that they told on the show. When I got home from the show, it was the first time in my life, in my 20, I was 27 then, 27 years of living that I actually heard my dad's side of the story about the divorce. Oh, shit. But he wouldn't tell me anything before the show. And then when the show aired, my dad was incredibly upset about how he was portrayed. And I went back and watched it multiple times, and I didn't feel like my dad was even painted that bad. I actually said a lot of great things about my dad. Yeah. Um, and it, he just he wasn't stoked about it, and we haven't had a relationship since the show. So I think I can understand where he's coming from, though. You know what I mean? Because like it's hitting his own. Yeah. It, it's something that maybe is not as true to him as yeah. he feels, you know? And like he's a like you just said, he's a really successful guy. Right. And being very successful, there's only a certain type of breed that are that's like that. Right. You know what I mean? And I can empathize 100%. I mean, I, I my dad did walk into a situation he was very uncomfortable with and wasn't expecting. And that was being asked some questions about his divorce on national television. Um, and then it was just one of those that the direction that he took even prior to the show and post-show if you're mad at me, that's fine. Be mad at me. But then he also stopped talking to my sister. Mm. He missed my, the birth of my, my nephews. Mm. Um, and he was there for every single one of the birth of my stepbrother and sisters and kiddos. So it was just, you know, he took the turn and went his direction in life with my stepmom and, and that side of the family. And my sister and I went this direction and, and it's where we've been. So, he's, so, so basically, he's, he's going through his own shit. And I, and I just, I, I want to put that out there is, is that like, yeah, someone that doesn't do that, like the, that doesn't show up because he obviously loves you and he obviously loves your sister yeah, and everything. Yeah. But like some people, it, it's so hard to get over certain things that happen. Like maybe it, maybe it affected him a lot more than you could ever imagine. Or like some, I don't know, like, I know you had a conversation with him right after. Yeah. I will. Yeah. But I, we had a con conversation after filming because, you know, I came back yeah, 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 filming and there's a short time before it's actually aired. Um, and in that time, we, we cleared up a lot of air. Like even after that conversation, I finally heard my dad's side of the story. He and I were, I was like, holy shit, dad, I'm so sorry. I had no idea that's how it actually Fuck, went Fuck, man. And he and I, were, I, like, we talked every single day and then the show aired and I, I got a text that said it's worse than I even thought. I don't want to talk. And since then, then you sent me an email asking me. Well, to don't, 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 don't go into extra stuff. I don't want to put yeah. too much out there. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, th there's certain things that basically your relationship and stuff, uh, there's been like some yeah. things going on. You know, and, it, and it, it affects me still, but I also think I'm a better man because of it. You know, it, it really forced me to go out and be the man that I want, that I wanted my dad to be or that I want to be now, you know? Not right. that my dad has ever, you know, my dad was fantastic, provided for us, successful, did everything that you could imagine a, a dad would want, you'd yeah. want your dad to do. But, yeah, yeah. But it's also allowed me to kind of go out and be everything that I wanted my dad yeah. to be also. And maybe it was the perfect setting. The way, the way yeah. it just happened is the way it happened. And I do believe that, like, you should have a conversation with him. Keep on pressing, like, having that relationship, building that relationship. Because yeah, it, I, I think someday. It's possible. It's 100% possible, and, yeah. and I hope that you do. But it's, like, cool because people can actually listen to this and watch this right now and be like, well, shit. Like, you think someone has everything. Yeah. Or, or like. Well, and that's the craziest part is, you know, so many people look at what they see on TV or my social media and everything, and, and you think that, oh, Chase is just living this perfect life. He's, you know, doing everything that a guy could possibly do. But, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just like everybody else. I've got my family struggles. I've got my personal struggles. I've got, you know, life isn't just all lovely and dandy every single day of the week. Yeah, man. But like, I, I do a, a pretty strong job of just filtering to put out only positive stuff when people look at me. And I don't know if that's fair or not. And I, th I, I think, dude, I think it's important to talk about, like, the fact that you just talked about your dad. Mm -hmm. it, I do think it's important. Yeah. Because like, it's not only about you anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's about everyone else that's watching or listening. That that's like, yeah. oh, oh, like I have some issues with my father. Like I actually want to go repair that. Right. Or like, right. you know what I mean? And I've been blessed enough just to have a great relationship with my mom and my dad my entire life. Like, well, my mom, we've had some differences like pretty often, but like, I can I can see where that's coming from. You yeah. know, like I went to MIT, this thing called it Mastering Transformational Transformational Training, and um, my my sister and my dad looked it up and like. 
I don't care. I'm just going to say it because I know I can repair relationships. Yeah. But they they looked it up and they're like, it's a cult. It's a cult. And I was like, at first I was like, no, it's not a cult. Whatever. It's a fucking cult. It <laughs> like it is. But like it helped me transform so much. Yeah. And my thinking and everything. Like it's the most incredible experience. But my my fucking dad sent me an email. I've, he's never sent me an email like this. Mm -hmm. He sent me an email basically saying like, you need to watch out. I don't know what you're doing. Da, 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 all these different things. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And then my sister sent me like a group chat with my, with my dad and like doing all this stuff. And it caused a lot of fucking issues. Right. It caused a lot. Like I was offended by it. I was like, you guys don't trust me. Like all this stuff. And I didn't talk to my sister for a good amount of time. Right. And then I didn't talk to my dad for a good amount of time. I was like, I don't want, I have nothing to do with, yeah them. yeah you know and like once i was able to repair that yeah my sister and i go through shit all the time but like once i was able to repair it and like really open up and talk through that shit and stuff like the relationships are so much better you know for sure i you know i think hearing that and, and i've talked to a lot of people about what's going on with my dad and i think someday yeah we'll reconnect um i don't think right now is the time yeah. it there's always a time and a place it'll come yeah. but it so, so that's, that's really cool, man. I'm glad. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for doing that. Yeah. And I, sure. and by the way, I acknowledge you for doing that shit because it's not easy to talk about. Although it's yeah. not like a hundred million people or 20 million people watching <laughs> this or listening. It's you still never know who catches wind, but it, you know, if, if I put it out there and someone resonates with it, then that that's helpful for me anyway. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So um, where do you see your, you're your single single. Um, do you know what you want? That's a loaded question. Can I get more specific? Do mm -hmm. I know what I want as far as a relationship or my business career or both? In your relationship, your relationships. Um, I do know what I want. I think I do know what I want. And a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, just where I've been and, and the direction and the amount of things that I've seen and who I actually want to date going forward. Keep I don't going. know if I found that. No. I mean, I, I have, I dated, you know, a couple amazing women and it didn't pan out. So now my issue is I hold everybody to a standard. So what's the standard, man? <laughs> and, and it's a, st I don't know if it's an unrealistic standard or not, but what's going on here? I'm very confused. Spice Girls. <laughs> And get with my friend. Make it last forever. Yeah. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Yeah. Tell, tell me what you want, want, what you really, really want. Really, 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 really want. I don't know the fucking song. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I felt like it was it was cool to to add in for a little spice, just yeah. like Revel, what we do. Um, with the DJ, yeah, DJ, great. I, I see what you're doing. DJ, little. It's cool. Um, so, so yeah, so like you kind of know what you want, but you don't. At the same time, it's right like now it's been new. a lot of personal development just because I have been, I've had my heart broken since the show. Have you? Just, I mean, it was like a short. Oh, fuck, is this another one? <laughs> Yo, is, this is. What is up with this table? Why? <laughs> is it the triangle that just gets you to talk about things or what? No, actually. And Mike, how often do we do this, man? We're just, he needs fucking more water. <laughs> I'm not going to die. He's choking. That. His beard just grew another inch. <laughs> so, so what's going on, man? No, it's, it's one of those that, you know, it's just I haven't found the right person at the right time. So a lot of it has just been kind of personal development and growth and, and travel. And if that right person comes now, I think I would be able to identify it. Do you think that you need to do that, that you're lacking focus in certain areas? Because I believe that we're always ready. Yeah. For a relationship. Yeah. It's just a matter of like the focus, where our focus is and stuff. Yeah. Do you feel like you're lacking focus in certain areas that's kind of pulling you away from being in that type of like really good, healthy relationship that you see long term? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. I think, you know, I don't I'm not really focused on building a relationship with anybody right now. It's a lot of focus on really Revel Social and my business acumen and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um and then just the, the lifestyle that I live as far as traveling and all that, it, it, it's proven that it's very hard for girls to date me because of jealousy. Just because, it's been proven. Is that like on WebMD and like studied and PubMed yeah, and all that shit? Actually, like from Harvard University, actually, Purdue. There was a, you know, a double blind test. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking bachelor PubMed. No, just, you know, being, 
being out in public and getting recognized and stuff, it sometimes it's hard for girls to be able to to stand that. As far as you know, you, I get recognized. I stop and take pictures, and I and I'm always happy to do that. And I chat and I stop and I make sure everybody feels comfortable. There was 150 people that took photos with you on our way back from Protein Bar over here. It was crazy. Oh, it was, I mean, was it 150? Wild, yeah, I man. was only at 120. Wild. I'm just kidding. Like, yeah, nobody said what's up, but it's cool. It's cool. No, it's They're cool. Just shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were in the table of trust. <laughs> Create you, man. I'm creating you. Okay. See, this is what I'm doing. I'm igniting something in you. I'm getting a little shifty so that I can come up with a question and boom, all of a sudden it's like cry. You know, it's like yeah. cry you. I could be the DJ cry. Cry you. Ooh, cry you. <laughs> no, now you're getting all over the board with the DJ name. Yeah, too. Cool. You DJ, DJ B. Myers. DJ B. Been there. Uh, what the f you, you used to be DJ B? No, but we've had one at Rebel, I'm sure. Really? No. I'm sure. That's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. Well, now you have me. So, so you get recognized and everything, and it like which is yeah, three years after the show, still getting recognized. Just it makes it a difficult environment to date, as long as well as social media. But dude, I think that you're creating that man, because I think a woman that is actually like good for you doesn't give a fuck. Like yeah. if I dated a woman right now, I she could have friends with guys. She can go hang out with her ex boyfriend. I don't care for sure. And you that's know, like, like that that falls in a in a platter of security right and so if a woman can't handle the fact that there's women taking pictures with you everywhere she doesn't trust herself enough with your relationship right and maybe it's even do you not trust yourself as much um i would be hard pressed to say probably interesting yeah like it, you're just maybe not you're just growing you're growing and I'm like growing. you're learning more about wh like who yeah. you want to be with see i want to be with creatine hcl you know, me and me and her, she's we a, got. She's a crazy bee. I yeah. don't know if you know her. Yeah, no, she dissolves like that, yeah. like into my digestive system. Right. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. Mom, I hope you're not watching. <laughs> my mom, yeah, my mom can't stand that I. Have curse. you checked the side effects of creatine HCL? Yeah, it, yeah, hydrochloric <laughs> acid. <laughs> yeah, I've been taking it for a while. No, my mom, dude, my mom cannot stand when I curse. Really? Oh yeah. She's like, she's like, oh. She soap your mouth when you were a child. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Just but like I, straight dawn to the mouth, or dude, like a bar of soap. Uh, <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> holy, <laughs> dude, that's aggressive, man. <laughs> hey, dawn. I know. I used to get, um, I used to get the spatulas all the time. Like that, that shit hurt, man. And sometimes I would even get the, um, the one, the uh, wait, the I don't understand. Water. You get the spatula? Yeah, like slapping me with the spatula. Like, like, they go get this, yeah, with a spatula. Or or they would or they would get me with the like freaking fly swatter the fly swatter you ever been hit with the fucking fly swatter no and then a little bit of the because the, the metal bar like comes yeah. in the middle so you get whacked and it's right. like it stings all the way through your body it's yeah. horrible <laughs> man but like yeah it's my cur like I've cur eh. I I didn't curse on social media for six years I only started cursing for like for a year now and I yeah. curse more than anyone's ever imagined um you follow Tony Robbins yeah so I know there's there's one piece where Tony Robbins talks about how he utilizes cursing in a very effective way to catch people's attention because it is such a powerful statement piece and obviously that's something that i think you need to grow into maturity to use and there's a, a mature way to curse and tony robbins does a great job of doing that yeah and dj create He's and great. i don't know why the fuck i brought that up but. i don't see you cursing <laughs> that, that was a bad way of cursing that was a very immature me and tony are gonna have a have a one-on-one -on -one ther two-on-one therapy session with you That'd be great. <laughs> I would love that. T Tony, myself. Tony would I'll just be the guy with the clipboard. Just like, yeah, just like, yeah Tony. Yeah. We're... Even that guy's job. Is, <laughs> <we're> just... <laughs> Even that guy's a genius. Yeah. So, man, we talked about a lot of different stuff. We covered some ground. Some ground. Okay. Is there anything that you feel like you really want to get out to the world right now? A message. You have something because I just felt it. A I message. felt it. You have Did? something. You have something. A message. Mm, yeah. Mm. Not about creatine. Not about creatine. Something serious or playful? Yeah. No, whatever the fuck you want, man. Honestly, like, do you have anything that you feel like you've always wanted to tell people? That, that maybe, maybe uh, people that watch the show or, um, or people that like go into bars and restaurants, like anything. One of my things that I focus on daily is thoughts or things. And I know you you've may have heard that statement yeah. before, but yeah. I, I think there's so much that can be 
talked about in that sentence and it's it's thoughts are creative and this is kind of cool with create you and everything that you think did you want to be hired on my, you want to join my team i thought this was an interview oh <laughs> dude I, I yeah i forgot there's four cameras here if you didn't see yeah it. one two three four and then we also are recording for a podcast right oh it's all good man gotcha. you're a rebel gotcha. you're just you're just in the dance right now <laughs> um back to my statement thoughts are things and everything that you think is creative and that's why it's called creativity so if you start you know every and then another one of my favorites is is watch your thoughts for they become your words watch your words for they become your actions watch your actions for they become your habits mm. and watch your habits for they become your destiny and i think that progression can really dictate exactly where you're going to end up in life and and if you can wake up and, and control your thoughts every single morning then you're going to be able to control your life so be impeccable with your words you know but it starts with your thoughts right but that's still being impeccable in, impeccability starts with your mind and what you think because right. there's every everything you think is in like words like they're words in our in our minds right it's, it's visual and obviously words so uh -huh. like what you say in your mind is going to I wanted you to finish I thought I thought this is dude I thought this is no I thought this is fucking like second grade <laughs> but that was your thought <laughs> no in I, your words I know not but I was thought. being impeccable with my words oh, okay <laughs> so kind of, I fucking love this man. I I dude, I love coming on here and just making people laugh. Like that's the shit. Even if it's fucking awkward as hell, yeah. it's just great, man. Right. Cause then we you wanna start Nothing beats an awkward sound. Yo, do you wanna rap? Do you wanna like combine raps real quick? I mean I'll throw down a beat. Alright, so you. I'm gonna go uh, No 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 no. I'm gonna do a first half of a rap and then you do the second half. Oh, okay. Okay, ready? Yep. So I'm riding in my limo. It's so big. I'm trying to talk to the doctor because I'm thick. Hanging with Brandon at his own place, trying to create my face. Uh, and we never talk about no race because we two white boys and we got a taste. Then you're going to figure out that my name is Chase. Hanging in this create you really fucking cool space. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe now. <laughs> I don't, sorry, bro. I don't know that's, how that's going to sound. Dude, I think, say, um, I think that's enough yeah. of this fucking podcast. <laughs> So, so, um, man, you, so like, to, just to summarize, like everything that we talked about, you know, like the, the show, you know, we, you've been through like a, a, a whirlwind and people don't even know like the stories of like, maybe yeah. I, I want to have you back on here. That's why I don't, I don't want to take too long on this show, even though it's been like an hour. Um, it was a quick hour. Was it an hour, Mike? 55 minutes, 55, 55 minutes. minutes. We got yeah. Let's, minutes. You want to just sit here and just look at each other in silence? <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Um, you know, I would I would say that there might just a little teaser. Might throw a little teaser out there. Right now, not not right now. Do it in the next. Uh, I'll do it right now. Fuck it. I already got invited back for another. Yeah, yeah, brother. So that's my teaser. And any <laughs> that's my tease. <laughs> if you want to do it now, or you can do it. No, we'll do it on the next. Yeah, no, because I want to talk about like real shit. Okay. I, I, I want to be. I want you to be like a co-host on the show, like. So it's not just me fucking being like, hey, brother, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Did you see that? Did you see that, man? I got in a fucking fight with my <laughs> mic. Just, I was like, <laughs> you just ate your mic. So anyways, if you were sitting at a table, last question I want to ask you. If you were yeah. sitting at a table, who would the three people be you invited to dinner? They could be anyone, Ooh. not your, not anybody uh, that you're like close with, no friends or family. Um, alive or dead. Yeah, dude, no matter. Anybody. Tony Robbins. I know we already covered that, but I just, I think the dude, you know, he's powerful, he's wise, and he could. Six, seven, too, man. Yeah. Um, he could put a, a little effect on there. Um, I would also like to. Man, I know I've thought about this. Whitney guy. Simmons? Whitney Simmons. Is that an Instagrammer? I think that might be an influencer. Sure, it is. Is it a fucking. Maybe. A, what the fuck? Why is she in my mind? She's I not even, invited to lunch, either way. <laughs> it's dinner. <laughs> oh. But you can come to Rebel. So, yeah, Tony's there. Um, I think I would really like to have a conversation with Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, dude. <laughs> Yo, why are you playing, <laughs> you playing footsies with me, first of all? Like, it's under the table? Camera, so you don't have to. Yo, can you look under the table, man? He was just playing footsies with me. 
he was like this. I was like, yo, come I'm on, man. Sure. If we're drawing a line down the middle of this table. Your feet were on you my do, side. You do understand table. that this table is not even, right? Well, yeah. It's, it's not a proper <laughs> triangle. Still. You got you to understand. Like, I gave you more fucking space because I respect you. I'm going to need you. You know, you're not getting any more space. <laughs> and you know what? Get that water out of here. Yeah. Get that water out of here. <laughs> you don't need it. I need Joke. a Gatorade, actually. <laughs> I need a Gatorade. <laughs> After all the sweating you've done. Good okay, so you. Tom Hanks is number two. Who's number three? Um, number three, Margot Robbie. Who? Hold on, bro. What? Dude, don't, don't what? you dare. Whoa, judgment. Would what? You be impeccable with your word. Um, he doesn't know who Margot Robbie is? Do you? Yeah, he doesn't know either. I'm this is what comes up, like freaking, she's, yes. her legs are open. What is yes. this nasty shit? Have you not That's seen disgust- Do you understand Wolf how Wall disgusting Street. that is? Oh. On YouTube, that's that, 18 plus, man. There's 1,000% nothing disgusting about Margot Robbie. That right here. This is not cool. She, it's she, from Wolf of Wall Street. Bro, yeah. The best scene ever. <laughs> You're ridiculous. This one? Yep. No, she, she was really, she, she really is pretty dope. She looks so different. She is a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yeah. I, did you know that I dated her? Your lies bounce off me like ping pong balls. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I'm really good at ping pong now. Me too. Interesting. We'll play. We'll play on on the podcast one time. I don't know how we're gonna fucking play on the podcast. Like we're like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Bring fucking paddles. But cool. So those are the three people. Why her? Um, mostly just because I think I would want to get to know her for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh. to, I got Tony Robbins giving me the <laughs> giving me the motivation to do oh and be whoever God. I want to do and be. Okay. So that literally I got Tom explains Hanks it. giving me the direction. This explains that, it, bro. You were literally. A horny growth factor, <laughs> cell searching business owner <laughs> that's in a new direction in his life. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing. You listen, you listen to me. <laughs> hey, you listen right now. <laughs> no, but that that's awesome, man. Because I'm I feel you, man. I'm on I'm on the same same way. But bro. before we go, will you answer the question? <laughs> what? Three people. Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, dude, I always have t- uh, three different people. So uh, the three people that I would love is um, I would like Oprah. Uh, Oprah. Oprah. She's actually Oprah. The- an Oprah singer. No, Oprah. Oh, okay. I would like Oprah. Okay. One hundred percent. Um, I would like um, fuck. I don't want Conor McGregor. No, man. Conor, you're not invited, man. Sorry, brother. But proper can come, and I'll drink it mm. in your favor. Um, but Oprah. Damn, dude, this is hard. Yeah, especially when um, you're on the spot. How about I've, Lance Armstrong? Nah, man. Mm. Why? So I can learn how to dope? <laughs> I'm kidding. He's no Lance. You got a rhythm going in your life here about no, Lan- doping, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Would you? I'm, on, I'm just on creatine HCL. Oh. Um. So so Oprah, I want a president. So, to be honest, um, Ooh. John F. Kennedy. Yeah, I, agree I would love with that to. One. I I I would love to hear what he's all about. Yep. And the number three, I want Putin. Really? Actually, no, no, fuck that. John F. Kennedy. I'm sorry, you're not invited. Um, we're going to be inviting Jim Kong Lu or the, the North Korea guy. Kim Jong Un. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Jong Un. <laughs> Not Wu. Wu. Uh. Sorry, brother. Yeah. I, I, honestly, if you invite me to North Korea, I'll come. I will. I wanna, and I'll make a beautiful video Just for you. Just make sure you get his name right before yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Kong. <laughs> Kim. Kim. Jong, Jong Un. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, you learned it on YouTube, didn't you? Uh, I mean, yeah, you little <laughs> fucker. You did. <laughs> You were like, you were like, yo, I need to figure this I out. Was Kim waiting Jong- for this moment for you to bring up Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> so him, <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> this is, is going to be Putin. a political asset. <laughs> and Putin. And Putin. You want Kim Jong Un and Putin at the same table with Oprah? And Oprah. And you. Cause, oh yeah, because first of all, I'm clear the tables because I bring all the hell. I bring people together. Number one. <laughs> yes, you do. And I bring relationship to. I Russia. have no idea if Russia and North Korea are in conversations at all, but I think that Oprah that much, could make it happen, though. She could, dude. All right, we need to fucking end this, man. This, okay. th- we're talking about fucking Kim Jong Un and Oprah. Uh, uh, and Oprah. So, <laughs> dude, thanks for so much for coming on. Yeah, I'm glad you choked. Talking to the mic whenever you get a chance. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, thanks for choking. No, thank you for <laughs> giving me an opportunity to. To really get choked up in my feelings. <laughs> that was great. No. And um, yeah, I'm not going to be filtering any of this. I don't, I don't think you need to. Except mm. for maybe that one part. Which part? 
<laughs> so this is where I trick you. <laughs> this is where I trick you because then you say it anyways. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. No, it's good. Yeah, it's all good. Which part though? I don't know. I was just. Yeah, oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. So next time when when you come on here, we're gonna talk about so, something more specific, and you'll be like a co-host. Okay. So maybe, I won't sit there because that's not my chair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, here? Yeah. That's my chair. No, this is my chair. I will never sit there. This is the the head of the show's chair. Oh, interesting. Just because you think you have a wider <laughs> space, you just think that you're in charge. Of I don't know where the wider space is. Is this Dude, not? Look. A, it's much. I, I literally fucking designed the All table, right, so man. So Pythagorean's theorem. What is? Did you really just bring <laughs> Pythagorean's Kim Jong Hu <laughs> theory <laughs> in the first? Hey, the listen. Fuck? Thank you guys for having me on the show today. <laughs> it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm excited to be here to yeah. have met you. Yeah, bro. I'm I'm super excited to see where Revel goes. Honestly, if you want to check out Revel, where can they go? Yeah, if you guys want to check out Revel, um, obviously you can check us out online. We've got a website, we've got our Instagram page, just Revel Social. But come see us here in Denver, Colorado, two 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 nine Blake Street, right across the street from Coors Field. Let me know. I'll come uh, try and say hi to you if you're there. Yeah, man. Sorry, I was laughing because I I I keep on hearing Kim Jong Woo like whenever you're talking, like in phrases. It's better than Kim Jong Woo. <laughs> So definitely check out Revel. I will be DJing there sometimes. I 100% will. I yeah. know I will. And also you have some cool projects that you're working on. You know, maybe we have something. The future looks bright. So yeah, stay cool. tuned. And where can they find along. you on Instagram? You can find me on Instagram and it's a long one, but it's at Chase underscore Brody underscore McNary. So we got the full name there. Just put Chase underscore Brody. You'll find him. Yeah, right after Chase Bank. Yeah, he is a blue check mark. So, um, yeah, he's super famous. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm kidding. He's not super famous. He's just famous. Yeah. He's known on The Bachelor, right? That's all awesome. known. But, yeah, definitely check him out. Um, and to summarize really quick, you know, he went through reality TV. Um, and before that, he was just a normal fucking dude going to work and doing his, his typical thing. And, you know, evolved from there, started building businesses. And he hasn't stopped. And that's the cruel thing about it is that you got to remember, yeah, there's jokes and everything in this, but um, a story is a story and there's always a starting point and a continuation, right? And you define that continuation. You define that vision for yourself and where you want to go. So if you're ever wondering if something like this is possible for yourself, could be. Mm -hmm. Is it your mind? Is it your words that are kind of deflecting you from that possibility? Could be. You just have to really start digging deep and just pursuing all the opportunity around you. And it's all about self-discovery. No one's going to discover for you. If you're on a path up the, up the hiking trail or whatever, um, you're the one that's going to discover something on the right or the left and right in front of you. No one else is going to. Someone can point it out, but you have to be the one to really define that. So make sure that you keep on pushing forward in your life. And whatever it is, if it is your vision, if it's a relationship with your mom, your dad, a business, whatever it is, just keep on pushing forward, take on opportunities, and be adventurous. Do things that make you uncomfortable. That's what Create You is all about. Being uncomfortable is incredible. You were uncomfortable with your whole, the, the whole part of getting onto the show and it changed your life. It yeah, transformed your life. For sure. And that's a blessing in disguise. So thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Create You Experience. Remember, when you do give a review in the description or the show notes, click on that link, enter in your email. You get seven awesome products, meal plans. You get a bunch of different things, a business builders, all this stuff. Um, absolutely free just when you give a review so check that out and also check us out on youtube subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you next time peace Flight. i'm dedicated to growth i keep my mind right i fell down got up i'm unbreakable anything in my way i'm a breakthrough lights camera action take two can't worry about what they do you gotta create you did it really oh shit how did it break